motor grader is used on just about all highway maintenance and construction jobs, windrowing, spreading, and mixing material. From rough cuts and snow plowing to delicate finish work, the motor grader is a versatile piece of equipment and it takes a great deal of skill to operate. The motor grader is designed primarily to level or smooth an area. To do this, it has a long wheelbase that can span short depressions or bumps. The blade, or mold board, is carried in the center so bumps can be cut off and depressions can be filled in. The tandem axles in the back help too. The axle moves independently so there is little up and down effect on the frame of the machine. All graders have the same basic design in common. The long wheelbase, the centered blade, and the tandem wheels. The instruments and controls vary from one grader to the next. Some graders have automatic transmissions, while others have standard manual transmissions. Also, some graders have four-wheel drive, where only the back tandem wheels provide the traction, while other graders have all-wheel or six-wheel drive, where both the back and the front wheels provide traction. All graders have a rear differential that provides positive traction. That's where the tandem axles are locked and the wheels on both sides of the grader turn together. However, some graders have a differential that can be unlocked to make turning easier. When the differentials are unlocked, the wheels on each side of the grader turn independently of the wheels on the other side. Finally, some graders are articulated. Articulation allows for sharper turns and easier positioning of the grader at the work site. Graders that have a rigid frame are non-articulating. Each motor grader has its own system of instructions and controls. We can't cover all the models in this program, so read the operator's manual. Get to know the locations and functions of all the instruments and controls. Learn the capabilities and the limitations of the machine you'll be using. As an experienced operator, you know that startup involves much more than turning a key. You have to complete a series of daily checks and make sure the grader is in good shape. The daily checks can be divided into four parts the walk-around inspection, engine checks, lubrication, and the cab inspection. The purpose of the walk-around inspection is to spot obvious problems, leaks, damaged or loose, or broken parts. If you find something wrong, fix it yourself or let your supervisor know about it. Leaks of oil, coolant, or fuel are certain signs that something's wrong. Investigate and get the problem corrected before you go on. Pay special attention to the rear tandem wheels. Wheel lean may indicate that you have a bad axle bearing. Keep an eye out for deep cuts and excessive or uneven tread wear. Look for loose or broken lug nuts. Make sure everything is tight. Take a look at the mold board and the blade that's attached to the mold board. Blades do wear out and they have to be replaced. A worn or cracked blade could damage the mold board, so bring tools with you in case you have to change the blades out in the field. Small cracks like these will only get larger, so get the blade changed before there is any damage to the mold board. Look for leaks or loose fittings around the hydraulic lines. Hydraulic leaks can be dangerous because the oil is under high pressure, so keep all fittings tight. During the walk around, take care of any problems that could prevent you from operating the machine safely. For the engine to run, it needs oil, coolant, air, and fuel. So check the engine oil every day. You never know when a diesel engine is going to start burning oil. And note the condition of the oil. Contaminated oil can ruin the engine. So, oil that is discolored, feels gritty, or smells of fuel is a sure sign of a major problem, so take a good look. T to check the coolant level, Remove the radiator cap and look inside. The coolant level should cover the entire radiator core. Keep both sides of the radiator grill clear. If the grill gets clogged up, the engine could overheat. Bad fan belts and hoses can cause overheating too. If they're loose, tighten them. If they're worn or cracked, get them replaced. A loose fan might mean a water pump is broken. There shouldn't be any play at all. Diesel engines use a lot of air and it has to be cleaned. Dirty air is one of the leading causes of diesel engine failure. 
that makes air filters absolutely critical. Most graders have an air filter restriction indicator. If it's been tripped, it's time to clean or replace the filter. Check with the operator's manual or talk with your supervisor or mechanic for the recommended procedure. The easiest way to clean the air filter is to tap it lightly on your hand to shake out the dust. If it's extremely dirty, you should get a new filter. Don't hit the air filter on a tire or any hard surface. That could damage the gasket and make the filter just about useless. The pre-cleaner traps most of the dust in the air before it gets to the air filter. Clean it out now and occasionally throughout the day. How and when you check the transmission oil will vary from one motor grader to the next. Never get under the grader without making sure that the parking brake is set and the blade is on the ground. There will be a lubrication chart in the owner's manual or on the grader itself. The chart shows the locations of the grease fittings and recommended service intervals. As part of daily maintenance, you should be primarily concerned with greasing the parts that get the most wear, which include the moldboard lifts and linkage. Check all around the grader for fittings that look dry. Grease is cheap compared to repair charges. Wipe the fitting clean before adding grease to prevent forcing dirty grease back into the fitting. Grease all steering parts. Refer to the operator's manual to find out where all of the grease points are and how often they should be serviced. Before you start up, make sure the transmission is in neutral and the parking brake is set. Don't crank the starter for more than 30 seconds. That will wear it out. If the engine doesn't start right away, wait a minute or so before you try again. Never attempt to start the grader unless you're sitting in the operator's seat. It could get away from you. If you are inside a garage or maintenance building, make sure there's plenty of ventilation. Exhaust gases are poisonous. Once you get started, run the engine at idle speed for five minutes. The engine needs time to warm up so an oil film can develop on cylinder walls and other internal engine parts. And it gives you time to complete the cab inspection. Keep your gauges clean so you can see them clearly and make sure they're all working. They can tell you a lot about the condition of the grader before you leave the yard. Take some time to clean up the cab. Wipe off greasy floorboards and remove any trash that could interfere with any operation of the controls. Make sure you can see clearly through the windshield, side glass, back glass, and mirrors. Check the windshield wiper. If the blade is worn, get a new one. Check the seat and armrest. A properly adjusted seat adds to your comfort and safety. Make sure your lights are working. You'll often work in isolated areas and your lights may be the only traffic control you have. After the warming up period, check the hydraulic oil level. Now that the oil is warm, you should get an accurate reading off the dipstick. And take a look at the exhaust smoke. Thick, black, or white smoke indicates engine trouble. It should be almost colorless. Finally, test your brakes. Make sure you have full pedal and it doesn't go to the floor. Put the transmission in reverse and test the backup a little. That's it for startup, but your daily checks don't end when you pull out of the yard. In fact, this continues throughout the day. Look, listen, and feel for signs of trouble while you're working. Pay attention to the gauges. If anything goes out of the normal operating range, stop working and investigate. There are several procedures the operator needs to carry out during shutdown. First, you want to fill the fuel tank. Filling it at the end of the day helps prevent condensation from forming in the tank overnight. If it's at all possible, park the grader on level ground. If you have to park on a slope, block the wheels. In either case, put the transmission in neutral and set the parking brake. Lower the blade and any other attachments to the ground. Don't shut off a hot engine unless it's an emergency. Let it idle for five minutes or so to cool down gradually. After you shut down, walk around the grader one more time. Look for any damage that might have occurred during the day. The grader is a complicated machine and requires a lot of skill to operate it correctly. Try to think of the daily checks as part of operation. 
Knowing how to take care of your grader is just about as important as knowing how to pull a ditch or grade a shoulder.